Hello and welcome to our lesson on exponentials and logarithms. So it's possible you have some experience with logarithms. It's possible you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say the word logarithm. So we're going to start from scratch here from the beginning. So the word logarithm, which is abbreviated log because it's a, it's a mouthful, um, it's basically just a power. A logarithm is a power or another word for power is an exponent. So I would really like for you to imprint into your memory that a log is a power. When you are looking for a log, you are looking for a power, an exponent. Okay? So let's start by looking at this expression here. This expression, how would you read that expression? How do you read it? So you might be thinking log 4 16 or log 4 of 16 or, or something like that. There are two words that you want to interject into this um, expression in order to read it properly. We are going to read this as the log base 4 of 16. So you want to interject those two words. So we're going to say log and then base 4 and then we're going to put the word of in there, 16. Okay, so log base 4 of 16 is how it's read. What is it asking for? Okay, I just told you that a logarithm is a power. So if you were to look at these two numbers, the 4 and the 16, can you think of a power that connects those two? Hopefully you're thinking, well, 4 to the second power is 16, which is true, right? Since 4 to the second power is 16, this expression is equal to 2. What this is asking is, 4 to what power is 16? So the question that's being asked is, what is the power of the base, in this case 4, that makes 16, which we call the argument. Okay, so 4 is what we call the base of the log, and 16 is what we call the argument. Um, let me write this, geez, it's going to be squished in here. This is the base of the log, and then 16 we call the argument. I'm not really sure why it's called the argument, but it's what it is, okay, I'm just the messenger here. Uh, so again, um, the question is, it, or the the thing to, to note is that a logarithm is a power, so the question here is what power of 4 makes 16, and that power is 2, therefore we could say that the log base 4 of 16 is equal to 2, and that is because 4 to the second power is equal to 16. Okay, the power of 4 that makes 16 is 2. So the log base 4 of 16 is 2. All right, so let's just practice reading and evaluating some basic logs here. Remember, we are just looking for a power. So for instance, reading this first one, number 1, we would read it, read it as the log base 8 of 64. So log base 8 of 64 is asking you 8 to what power is 64. Well, we know 8 to the second power makes 64, so that this expression has to be equal to 2. Okay, how about number 2? The log base 8 of 1 64th is asking you 8 to what power makes 1 over 64. Well, we talked about our negative rule in our previous topic. The 64 is on the opposite side of the fraction as it was in number 1, which means this has to have the opposite sign. So that's going to be equal to negative 2. And you could confirm it, right? You can put in 8 and raise it to the negative second and see that that does in fact get you 1 over 64. Okay? How about this guy? Uh, the log base 7 of 343 is asking you 7 to what power is 343? Well, 7 to the third power is 343, which means the log base 7 of 343 is 3. Okay, what power of 7 makes 343? It's 3. Now if you notice on number 4 there's something missing, or something that looks a little different about it from the others. Uh, this one is what we call the common log. When you don't see a base written there, there is still a base, it's just an implied base of 10. So it's like when we see an x, there are two things that we imply about this x. They're not written there, but we know that they're there. We know this coefficient of 1 means I just have 1x there, and then the power of 1 means it's 1x to the first. So we don't generally write the coefficient of 1 or the power of 1, but they're implied. We know they're there. The same is true for a common logarithm. If you don't see the base written there, 
there is an implied base of 10. So this is really the log base 10 of 1,000. You just won't see the 10 when that's the base. It's implied. So the question is 10 to what power makes 1,000? What power of 10 makes 1,000? Well, the third power, so the log of 1,000, has got to be 3. Okay, how about this guy? Log base 7 of 1. Okay, 7 to what power makes 1? What is the power of 7 that's going to make 1? Well, anything to the power of 0 makes 1. So any base there with an argument of 1 is going to have to be equal to 0. Any base, the log uh, with any base and an argument of 1 will have to equal 0. will equal 0 because anything raised to the power of 0 is going to equal 1. Okay, just a little side note there. Alright, here's an interesting one. I put put it there as a U-try. Um, it's a little bit of a make-you-think question, but when you see the answer you're going to be like, oh, okay, duh. Uh, but if you want to pause and think about it for a second, it would be a good opportunity for you to do so. So this is saying 6 to what power gets you 6 to the 4th power? Log base 6 of 6 to the 4th. So if I write that question again, 6 to what power is going to make 6 to the 4th power? Well then this looks a lot like what we were doing in our previous topic. If those bases are equal, those exponents have to be equal too. So this means this expression is equal to 4. 6 to what power makes 6 to the 4th power? It has to be 4. And in fact, um, when those bases are equal, they will always cancel. Um, again, it, it, something similar, like if you had log base 8 of 8 to the 5th, this is saying 8 to what power is 8 to the 5th power, because these bases will always be the same and irrelevant in our problem. If these bases are the same, then that will always be your answer, okay? So if the base of your log and the base of an exponential in there are the same, then they will cancel and that exponent will be the answer. Um, but that's not as important to know as uh, the little note there we put in 5. Okay, so we did some of this without a calculator, and I would argue you should be able to do all of those things we just did without a calculator. However, there are some log buttons in the calculator that are pretty helpful. Um, Desmos has three log buttons, but your standard calculator is going to have two. It's going to have a common log button, the LOG, and then it's going to have the natural log button. So natural log, which is abbreviated LN, sometimes people mistake that for IN, but it's LN for natural log, maybe some dyslexia setting in there. Uh, but remember, the common log is what we just saw in number 4 above. That is always going to be base 10. And then our natural log is always base E. Now I'm not sure if you're familiar with E. Um, we're going to talk more about it. Oops, sorry. We're going to talk more about it later. But E is a lot like pi. So in your head, you probably remember that pi is approximately 3.14. Now technically, the decimal goes on forever without repeating, but you've probably memorized at this point. Pi is about 3.14. So E is similar in that it's an irrational number. It is a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. It just has a different value. So let's just go to the calculator again for a second here. So pi, again, 3.14. Decimal goes on, but we remember it is 3.14. E is similar, just has a different decimal value. It's 2.71828. So I would like for you to try to commit to memory that E is just a decimal. It's just about 2.72. So just like pi is just some decimal, E is just some decimal, okay? Now it happens to be the base of a lot of exponential functions. Um, it happens or occurs a lot in the financial realm, and we'll see some applications of it later in the unit. But for now, if you could just commit to memory that E is like pi, it's just some decimal, okay? The decimal happens to be about 2.72, okay? So that is the base of what we call our natural log. Now we're going to look at a lot of properties of logs, and when I say log, I'm not just specifically talking about the common log. It could be the common log or the natural log, okay? They have the same properties. They look a little different. They have different bases, but the properties are the same. The way they function are the same, okay? So let's look at a couple more problems here. And we're going to 
help with the count or to get some help with the calculator. So number six, I would argue you shouldn't need the calculator for, but so you can see, the calculator could help us with a problem like this. So in Desmos, if you go to functions and then you go to miscellaneous, so miscellaneous, and you're gonna see toward the bottom here, you have the natural log button and you have the common log button. So the log of 100, I'm gonna put that in here. It's gonna give me an answer of two. Now that should make sense. Remember, this is technically the log base 10 of 100 and 10 to what power makes 100? Well, that's two, okay? Or if I wanted the log of 10, the log of 10 is gonna be one because again, this is the log base 10 of 10, and it's asking 10 to what power makes 10? Well, 10 to the first makes 10. Now, if we're looking at something like the log of 50, okay, the log base 10 of 50, is there an exact power of 10, a whole number power of 10 that's gonna give us 50? No, well, I, I know 10 to the first is 10, and I know 10 squared is 100. I'm looking for 10 to some power to get me 50. Well, since 50 is between 10 and 100, it's gonna be some decimal amount that's between one and two, but the only way to get that decimal approximation without just guessing is to use the calculator. So if I ask my calculator, what's the log of 50? Again, it should be a decimal between one and two, and there it is, 1.69897 and so on. So we're gonna say from our calculator, this is approximately, let's just say it's about 1.7, okay? Now how about the natural log of one? Oops, back to the calculator. Functions, miscellaneous, let's hit the natural log of one. As we said earlier, this is gonna equal zero. So technically this is natural log base e of one, but e to what power is gonna make one? Well, anything to the power of zero is one. So no matter what your base is here, if the argument's one, it has to be a power of zero that makes that one, okay? And how about the natural log of e? Let's see, natural log of E has to be one. Natural log of E, sorry. Natural log of E is one. Again, this is natural log base E of E. That's E to what power is gonna make E? Well, the only way you get something back if you not change the value of the number is to raise it to the power of one. Again, this was saying E to what power makes one. And that's why number 10 has to be one. Now, if you look at number 11, Again, this is natural log base e of 20. Can you raise e, which is already a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal, to some exact power and get a nice 20? No, so the only way to get that decimal approximation um, is to put this in the calculator. And so we get about 2.9957, let's just say this is about three, okay? Now, uh, just so we can reference it later, um, we can technically, um, evaluate any log using Desmos. So if we, from the keyboard, click on, we said functions, and then we went to miscellaneous, then we're gonna choose either the common log or the natural log as we did in the previous problems, or there is a third button, and you'll see it in here, functions, the third button, so next to our LOG is LOG, and then there's a base of A. That one allows us to change the base to whatever we want. So if it's not a common log with a base of 10, we can hit the other button to change its base. So for instance, if I wanted to evaluate the log base three of 40, okay? Earlier we saw one like, uh, we said log base eight of 64. Now I wouldn't put that in the calculator using log 64 because that's a base of 10 where this is a base of eight. But this one I could evaluate, sorry, without a calculator because I know that eight squared makes 64. So I knew the exact value because I know some powers of eight, right? But if we look at this case here, this is saying three to what power is gonna get you 40? Well, I know that three cubed is 27. Let me do this over here. I know that three cubed is 27 and I know that three to the fourth power is 81. And I'm looking for three to some power to get me 40, which is in between 27 and 81. So I know the decimal I'm looking for is going to be between three and four. And 40 is a little closer to 27 than it is to 81, which means my decimal is gonna be probably closer to three, but the only way to get a certain decimal approximation is to use the calculator. So my best guess is gonna be like three point, I don't know, four-ish but that's really just a guess. But I can go into my calculator and say, hey, calculator, 
press the log base A button. Now I can put in a base of 3, and then I can say, what's the log base 3 of 40? And there it is, 3.35. So I was pretty, pretty close with my approximation of about 3.4. Okay, now um, I said earlier that these up here are things that you should be able to do without a calculator. But, you know, if you're a little unsure of yourself and you're looking at log base 8 of 64 and you're just not fluid with these yet, then this, again, is something that you could put into the calculator. Log base 8 of 64, and there it is, it's 2. Okay? Let's try a couple more of these. Let's try to ballpark this one. So I'm looking for 5 to some power to get me 18. And I know 5 to the first is 5, and I know 5 squared is 25, and since 18 is between 5 and 25, my decimal has to be between 1 and 2. Now there are 13 units away here, let's see, we're 12 units away here, so it's probably going to be pretty close to about 1.5. My decimal is going to be pretty close to the middle of 1 and 2. So without a calculator, I would say this is probably going to be about 1.5. But let's go ahead and ask the calculator. Let's see. Log base 5 of 18 and 1.8. Okay, so I was a little off, and that's why the calculator is helpful. But I knew it was going to be decimal between 1 and 2. So we're going to say this is going to be about... 1.8, and that's because I can't subtract. Um, this was 5 and 25. Guys, what was I doing? 13 units away here, and this is only 7 units away, so the decimal should have been closer to 25. My goodness. This is what happens when you're talking to yourself. If I was in a classroom, someone would have been like, uh, that's not 12. <laughs> Sorry. All right, one for you to try. Uh, and when I say you try, obviously everyone can push buttons in a calculator, but see if you can establish what the calculator, or approximate what the calculator is going to approximate, okay? So this is saying four, four to what power is gonna make 22? Well, I know four squared is 16, but that's not quite enough. I know four cubed is 64. So four to my power, to get me to 22, it's going to have to be a decimal between 2 and 3. And there's only 6 units from here to here, and then 42 units from here to here. It's going to be a decimal that's going to be closer to 2. So 2.1, 2.2 maybe, I would say. Let's go ahead and confirm. Log base 4 of 22 is, yep, about 2.2. Oops, so about 2.2. Okay, so while I would argue that um, like all of these problems here you should be able to do without the calculator, these four here should have been doable without the calculator, the calculator can technically do anything that we've evaluated on this page. Okay, so the, the goal is to get comfortable with evaluating these ones that are exact, but your calculator is there to evaluate for you. Now the purpose um, of the logs, not so much to be able to evaluate logs. Um, it's what we want what we want to be able to do is use logarithms to solve new types of equations. And so we want to be able to take something that's in log form and write it in its equivalent exponential form. So logarithms can be rewritten in an equivalent, that means it will look different, but it will have the same value. So an equivalent exponential form and vice versa. So when I gave you something like the log base b of, let's say, y, and I said, what is that going to be equal to? Um, we would say, well, b to some power is going to be equal to y, right? And all we're going to do now is just replace the question mark with another variable. So let's say that this log is equal to some variable, like, let's say that it's equal to x. So now, b to that x power is going to have to equal y. So b to the x power equals y is the equivalent exponential form for this log. So this is two ways to say the same thing. This is our log form, and this is our exponential form. These two expressions are equivalent. That means they look different, but they have the same value uh, basically the same meaning, okay? So it's, they're two equivalent forms, they just look different. And again, the purpose is to help us solve, or turn the pen on, it's to help us solve exponential equations that cannot be rewritten with like bases, okay? And we're going to get to how all that works in a, in a little bit, but or in the next few topics, we're going to solve a whole bunch of different types of exponential equations. But for right now, 
we have to be able to go from one form to the other. So what it's important to keep in mind here is that the base of the log and the base of the exponent are the same. The base is always the base, okay? The base of the log is the base of the exponential. So the base is the base. And then what happens is the exponent on the exponential, the exponent on the exponential, that is the answer to the log. So the exponent on the exponential is the answer to the log. The exponent is the answer to the log, okay? So those are the keys to remember when you're rewriting. Now, going from log form to exponential form, we just had a whole bunch of practice with that, and it's really not bad when there are numbers in there that we know. For example here, this is going to be equivalent to 2 to the fifth power equals 32. And it's pretty easy to arrange those numbers in a way that makes sense. Same thing here. Okay, we know that 3 to the second power is equal to 9. And then the same thing here. We know that 5 cubed is equal to 125. It's a little harder when we're going from exponential to log form because we have to know where exactly things go. So in log form, it's going to be the log base 12, because the base of the exponent is 12, the base of the log has to be 12. And then the argument is going to be 144, because the exponent here has to be the answer here. So log base 12 of 144 equals 2. So the base is the base, and the exponent is the answer to the log. Okay, it's ugliness here. Okay, so again here, this is going to be the log base 6 of 216 equal to 3, where the base is the base and the exponent is the answer. Okay, now just be careful. I know you don't, most of what you're going to be doing is typing in, but if you are writing this, and someday you move on to higher levels of math and you write these logs, make sure you're writing the base of the log as a subscript, so it should be written a little smaller and a little lower than the argument. Okay, and then here we got one last one. If we were to rewrite this, we would say this is the log base 3 of 243 equal to 5, where the base is the base and the exponent is the answer to the log. Okay, so that's it for now. Again, we're going to be using this process of rewriting to solve some different types of equations as we move through this module. But for now, you need to be able to evaluate logs, preferably without a calculator when that's possible, but definitely using the calculator uh, when it's not. And you should be able to rewrite um, expressions in, from log to exponential form or vice versa. Alright, so you got some practice to work on, but as always, if you need some extra help, then just reach out. Alright guys, take care.